so actually the, the thing the thing which i wanted to discuss today um is uh, related to a number of people who who want like whenever they are uh, progressing in their career they 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 come across the situation where they need to be interviewed that interview can be for job that interview can can be uh, for academics like the registration with any consul okay medical consul like the people who are in saudi arabia they have to appear if they want to become a consultant they have to appear in a in an interview um which people say it as a exam but actually it's not exam it's an interview so um anyone anyone wants to share his or her experience in an any interview for a job can anyone anyone wants to volunteer well this is not a like this is not an academic session uh, this is a like a, i just want to highlight some points and which will be helpful for all of you as a resident as a consultant whatever you name it okay so can anyone volunteer all will remain silent yes ramesh ram would you like to speak out you know if all of you will remain silent this discussion will not be much useful uh, anyone wants to speak out please that any 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 uh, thing you want to share that if or what is your concept that if you will be interviewed for a job or for something what are the things you should be taking care and how you should speak out first of all normally they ask about tell me something about you like yes yes so what would you like to answer like we will start with this thing that introduce yourself so what would you like to say yes please listen this discussion is yes yes sir uh, rahim dr abdul rahim we can, we can discuss start start is like i am so i am so and currently practicing uh, i don't know this i didn't face like that but okay so i am so i am so i am currently working as a in this in this current station and the is that like for example just a default for a resident for example, for for example uh, like if i i would like to tell that i am fourth year resident i am about to finish my residency okay so like mm -hmm. uh, i would be i would be introducing because they don't know me okay so you yeah. have to tell well about your workplace that i am working uh, i am in that training program or i have finished that training program or i am at that position that is the hospital and this you just have to sketch that i am working in a like for example if you are working uh, um in in a in a like a tertiary care hospital so you can say that i am working in a tertiary care hospital with this number of bed Uh, having these these sort of specialities and my main domain is that okay i'm working i'm being rotated in all of it or for example if you are a resident and you are uh, applying for um for a job during residency or you have finished your training now and you have passed your exam and now you have become a newly inducted senior registrar in somewhere in the world okay so you would be just like you have to give a sketch give, give a sketch that where are you working what is that hospital what is uh, like you just they, they don't know anything about that hospital they don't know because um, that interview may be taken by a national circuit or that interview may be taken by an international circuit okay in an international circuit where they they are they are uh, taking your interview maybe out of a continent or out of country so you just have to tell that what where you are okay so this is the first point that you and then uh, you can go further on from there so next question which which is uh, uh, frequently asked in all the interviews that uh, like why do you want to join us okay so this is another another point 
that what do you want to tell and why do you want to join us if they are asking this question you know if all of you are residents or if you are all remain silent there is no advantage of this discussion okay i don't have uh, you are not having interview right now so just take it easy yes uh, dr rahim if you want to continue please because all other are silent and i don't know they are interested or not i don't know what what's happening so we can tell like i uh, want like you you we just i give you, a, I give you a scenario this, that you. you are you are applying to a tertiary care hospital and and they want to ask you why you want to come here so why so want to join i have achieved some uh, career things in my career so i have to improve myself and by joining with the team i can improve myself and i can uh, help to the company itself of the same hospital i can uh, like you you can you can tell well, that uh, uh, i have heard i have heard a lot about your hospital okay or i know about uh, i have some friends or i have heard about you from any source according to the scenario you can modify this sentence but you can just tell then before you were telling about your hospital now you are telling about their hospital what are the what are the attractions you want to find there that for example you want to say that i have i have that much interest in my during my residency i had done this thing and now i i want to practice it more and more uh, in your hospital so i i think that it, that will be a good place for me to practice further on so like you just you can have few points about that tertiary hospital like you for example if you are applying to a hospital which is famous for emergency like i i was working in uh, in a hospital which was famous for famous for all the the emergencies so that hospital was famous for trauma care that hospital were, was was uh, tackling all the emergencies so including like fractures and acute abdomen and head injury and uh, acute vascular injuries limb limb saving surgeries whatever okay so you can explain to them that i, I have this this the reason for for me to join there okay then <clears throat> then they can ask you that what is your field of interest okay like what is your field of interest so even if you are not 100% sure about that because i asked this question a number of people that what is your field of interest they are not able to answer this question um, because unfortunately in our in our training we are not being groomed how to present ourselves how to sell ourselves how to represent ourselves so and this is this remain lacking so when you are uh, happen you happen to came across such scenarios you don't have any answer okay so please uh, just this answer that what are what is your main field of interest yes please because uh, remember one thing that international forum uh, anesthesia uh, icu pain which we are doing all in pakistan uh, definitely if i if i don't go to pediatric anesthesia or obstetric anesthesia uh, forget about it but at least pain uh, cardiac anesthesia icu they are totally majority in cases majority of cases they are separate okay so you just have to tell whatever you want to tell you can you can tell about regional you can tell obstetric you can tell pediatric so how will you explain i we can tell i have gained experience in the particular field like pediatric anesthesia or cardiac anesthesia so mm -hmm. by joining your team i can improve myself and i can save your hospital in the field uh, i have particular interest on that like mm -hmm. like for example if you if you want to they will ask why you want to do pediatric anesthesia so what 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 is a special thing which you can you can say about pediatric anesthesia yes please okay special interest special interest or like yeah just you know for example if you if you want to tell about regional anesthesia you can say that i uh, it's an interventional uh, thing and I, I i think future is regional anesthesia okay and i yeah. want to to improve my or, or i have skills and i want to practice is more and more okay 
so regional anesthesia mm-hmm. in future in future maybe there will be no regional anesthesia for majority of cases and or or if even if you are giving general anesthesia there will be part of regional anesthesia or there will be requirement of uh, regional anesthesia in every surgery you are performing or any uh, any anesthetic technique uh, you are performing you need to have some regional anesthesia uh, on top of that general anesthesia technique okay so this is a this is a possible question which are which which may be asked in your interview so we started from introdu- introduce ourselves what you are what you have and then um, uh, like uh, why you want to join that hospital and why you have a certain speciality okay then if they want to go to a certain uh, like uh, uh, questions about that uh, if they want to just evaluate you that how are your reflexes that usually they usually in in even in in an in interview where they are not focusing on only checking your personality even then if they want to ask some academic questions usually usually their questions will be related to some handling of the critical uh, scenarios okay so even if they are on junior level and they want to check check it out whether you have some baseline knowledge or not or you have become a consultant then then the scenarios may will be difficult and that will be related to decision making okay that will be related to decision making and in junior level maybe they will be asking you how to handle a critical situation even even for senior positions they can ask you still this question but usually these are the main two domains okay so if you want to prepare yourself for any interview you just have a look on the specialties being covered highlight highlighted in that hospital okay and then you can move uh, further on from there okay so this is my main like main uh, point because they will be asking you for example if a hospital has trauma they will be asking you a patient with polytrauma came to you and how will you handle it okay so in th- there is a difference between an academic exam into a, a based uh, oral part and an interview because in interview they don't have time for them they don't have any key with them and they don't want to to sh- uh, you to tell each and every uh, tiny uh, details of a, a academic topic they just want uh, how will you handle it okay so the answer will be very gross and that is that point will i will just highlight that the same thing is being uh, performed when they are people are appearing in uh, interview for saudi commission okay so or, or many other many other places they 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 are they have exam and they are only focusing majority of cases only on uh, like uh, uh, bleed, uh, if they want to ask bleeding for example say what will you do uh, dr rahim if you ha- just handle a scenario in which patient suddenly uh, suddenly starts bleeding what will you do anyone please uh, yes yes dr rahim it's come something patient like polytrauma started bleeding oh okay so what will you say so first thing here well as usual we can start with the i will assess the patient with the yeah with the abc method okay according to the airway breathing circulation so okay. and the if they have a patent i can go for the breathing or the they have test okay and the uh, secretion if the same thing uh, support the secretion and sequence they have so it's the same as the airway or sequence they have with the modified or intubation whatever so i i for the intubation it says to be a rapid sequence and the, and there must be expected difficult intubation or because polytrauma no so again everything. again listen, so first i have to uh, listen dr rahim uh, just uh, uh, i'm just giving you a hint they are not uh, again the, this is economic answer this is not a practical answer okay practically what you do you just immediately you can say call for help and call the blood bank yeah. when there is bleeding what you do yeah. you do just uh, do like that so they are expecting you yes of course you you can uh, the, the the some more additional dial will be in the with the form of uh, abgs you will be doing in some abgs they will be trying to have some multidisciplinary team which may be needed for their help or anything like that okay because uh, extra answers will be or for example again uh, if they want to have a touch of academics they can ask the uh, they want to listen about 
massive transfusion protocol. You will just say that I will call the blood bank and I will activate massive transfusion protocol. Okay? Because that will cover everything. Massive transfusion protocol means you are asking for emergency help because the patient is, uh, you are losing the patient and you just uh, need to do something urgently. So that will be uncross matched blood, which will be uh, immediately provided to you and you will move on from there. Okay. So like this is, I'm just giving you one example. This, this may be anything. So uh, because in academics, you will be telling up like that, like you were telling. Okay. So that is a pure academic answer. But uh, practical, they, uh, they, are, they are telling you that there is bleeding. So what will you do? So you, uh, there will be things which will be done by the surgeon that they may be packing it. Okay. You will be activated. You will be calling for help for additional pair of hands, additional help. And then you will be activating the, uh, the, the massive transfusion protocol. And then you will be, and then rest of the things you can tell a number of things. Like you can tell about cell saver. You can tell about rapid infuser system. You can tell about uh, uh, crystallide or colides at that time. Okay. You will be saying about uh, like uh, big IV, uh, IV cannulas. You can say about uh, arterial line. You can tell about that if the patient is, you are losing the patient, you might need to start some resuppressors or inotropes. So that will be further thing. Okay. So academic question will be that how to prevent is it, hmm? Yes, please. Is it okay to tell that I will inform my consultant or seniors or something like that? I think it is better to say like a colleague, senior colleague or because it depends who you, what you are. Okay. If you are yourself consultant, so they will expect you to just call for additional pair of hands rather than you are calling for senior okay so they are expecting they are they are they want you to check it out they they want to check you out that whether you are able to handle this crisis as a senior fellow and handling the situation uh, as a team leader okay so in in that in that frame of mind you have to answer like that if you are in again i tell you that i'm just trying to give you some hints about uh, how to how to present yourself okay so actually in this question, they are just, they just want to check you out that do you know the basic steps you need to do or not? They are not asking you um, tiny details in majority of cases. Okay. So for example, if it is an obstetric uh, patient or placenta previa accreta, uh, of course, there will be something extra which will be related to hysterectomy which will be related to ligation, which will be related to use of oxytocin or something like that. Okay. Or uh, in massive bleed, bleeding patient, academically, I'm just telling you that you can say about cell saver, you can sell, uh, you can tell about uh, like uh, provision of warming or uh, warming system. Okay. And transdynamic acid, you can, they, you might use the word for uh, factor seven. So things like that. Okay. So again, for example, if you have a, if you have a patient with the, uh, like this one uh, trauma, okay. So your focus will be around uh, like uh, handling the fractures and handling the like uh, uh, usually neck involvement of neck. In uh, they are uh, they want you to know about how will you handle uh, uh, this one uh, like but in that surgery. scenario when you when you have head injury, okay, when you have a head injury. So they, they are expecting you to know, in addition to bleeding, for example, if you have a polytrauma patient, so bleeding will be one part and the other part with reference to head injury, uh, like uh, preservation of uh, neck and spine. Okay. So that will be an additional step. But I, I did tell you something that I'm just uh, giving, you, giving you a hint that the, what they will be expecting if they are just uh, doing a, uh, like, uh, an, uh, like they, they are just evaluating you that how will you react to a scenario, okay? Similarly, they can ask you, uh, you are doing a block and now you have uh, one uh, uh, local anesthesia toxicity. So what will you do? Okay, so uh, of course, I'm not going in details at the moment. I'm just giving you a hint that these may be the questions, a common um, if you are a junior level, they can ask you how to handle you are doing a case and suddenly there is hypoxia uh, in your patient. So how will you handle? 
you are dealing a uh, orthopedic patient and uh, you are transferring the patient and suddenly patient uh, collapse what will you do you are uh, you are doing a, a orthopedic patient uh, and you want to like anesthetize that patient and now that patient uh, is having uh, embolism so things like that so uh, usually in any interviews they are asking you and another question which usually they ask in interviews and uh, situations like that is out of operation theater uh, anesthesia okay so this is uh, expect this question in almost all of your exams out of operation theater anesthesia in the form of uh, like uh, uh, like uh, mri endoscopy ercp okay so things things like that this is this is a common common happening uh, 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 which is uh, which is there in any interviews or any exam, even even this uh, another because in anesthesia all things revolve around airway management so difficult airway difficult airway may be in adult difficult airway may be in pediatric so you should they will be asking you you are doing a case and you cannot intubate what will you do so actually now you just have to handle the situation that you will be your approach will be like in that scenario you will be telling that, that the things which which uh, which you were telling that i will make sure patient airway is patent and i will just try it for supraglottic or whatever you like according to the scenario you can have a number of answers okay so i i, I think this was a basic uh, thing which i wanted to to discuss and another thing is that always have an eyeball contact whenever you are giving an interview always have an eyeball contact don't don't try to uh, like look here and there try to have your eye contact with the person who is taking your interview even in zoom classes still try to look at the camera wherever the camera is try to look at the camera because because if you are not looking at the camera maybe uh, like uh, your body language will not look nice okay and another important thing which i will uh, suggest you is that you should be dressed well if you are uh, appearing in any interview if you are going there of course they will not pass you or they will not fail you or they will not select you only because of your beautiful dress but still you should be look smart you should be looking confident you should have a smile on your face because all these things will matter if you have an interview and now your internet is not working and you are just uh, trying to have a you you should have three internet connections if you want to have a zoom uh, online uh, 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 interview or anything you should be you should uh, not take uh, any chance okay you should not take any chance that anything happen okay so i uh, i hope you understand so you have to look uh, smart you have to prepare yourself you have to keep uh, even uh, you usually when they are taking uh, in, uh, like a job interview they are not expecting you that you will be telling each and every point about something they just they are just test, testing your nerves how you are how you can handle the pressure and as a consultant for example this is one very important thing that how will you communicate with the other specialties like for example if you want to cancel a case if you want to delay a case if you want to do a, a specific investigation don't say blindly because that investigation what do you want to earn from that investigation i want to do echo what what will you do with that echo okay echo is done now and what will you do now okay so this is i'm um, just giving you an example that what for example if you want to do an echo what next any surgery for example that's why whenever this is a general principle that whenever you are doing a surgery uh, you are being asked to anesthetize any case first thing you should think whether the surgeon surgery is emergent urgent elective planned what it is what is it how much time you have okay because a number of things which you will be doing it is not to fill the paper is to to have the best possible management for the patient so unfortunately we for some time we forget what we, why why are you doing this what is the rationale behind that investigation so uh, this is for not only for academic, academic exams this is also true for interviews that whatever for example they will say that i will do this case uh, this uh, test 
why you want to do this what information would you will you will you get with from that okay so like you should be just prepared that whatever investigation you want to do there should be a reason behind doing that and for example you are having a k patient with low hemoglobin and uh, now patient is having uh, a, 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 a surgery which you cannot delay okay because maybe the the surgery will cure the reason for his uh, bleeding uh, sorry for uh, his or her low hemoglobin okay so how you can delay it similarly you have a cancer patient and you are asking for echo and you you know that nothing much will be changed so you are asking to delay the case and you will have uh, spread metastasis because just because anesthetists want to have an echo in a patient and this patient had a cancer and you managed to to have a spread okay so when when they are evaluating you they they, they want to know what you will be doing similarly when they are asking you a question about uh, non operating room anesthesia you should be knowing how will you handle anesthesia care over there what medications you would be needing what an anesthetic technique you will need because you will you cannot do the things which you are doing usually in your operation room a number of things will be a little different for mri you are using the mri compatible things and you should be knowing about the basic safety that you should be knowing that there is uh, something which is called as quenching then suddenly patient can hypoxic and even operation whole operation room staff can become hypoxic if quenching occurs suddenly helium is a lot uh, big amount of helium is released and uh, there will be problem so if they are mri they are uh, expecting that you should be knowing about noise you should be knowing about cold environment you should be knowing about mri compatible equipment and what you should be knowing what are the challenges which you will have but what will be the patient groups this is true for any surgery as well by the way that if they are asking you to do any surgery you should be knowing what is the reason for it because mri not uh, there will be mri majority of mri will be with, with some specific reason either diagnosis of a neurological problem or diagnosis of a soft tissue or something like that okay so uh, you you should be you should be very clear about what you are doing where so <clears throat> these things are important anywhere but especially if you are performing uh, any uh, you are appearing in an interview you should be you should be taking care of these things even more okay so any any question any comments about about uh, um, about whatever i have said or whatever you have listened up till now because Sometimes there will be might ask, yes please uh, like with the colleague with the problem with the colleague sometimes a surgeon and uh, said so answer is blaming surgeon or surgeon blaming after how will you deal with that i'm sorry uh, your voice is very uh, like uh, shallow if you can be a little loud no, if they ask something uh, with the what do you call uh, there is any any problem with being the surgeon that means surgeon blaming and a surgeon like, this blaming is the problem is because of you yeah it's because of you it's happened like oh the patient arrested because of you something like that so still, how do you, you handle so it's still yes you are absolutely right still still you have to be gentle you have to because you will not uh, say this is not my responsibility uh, you cannot abruptly say no because a majority of things when they are saying uh, because there is a lot of logic uh, every, you know care of anesthetist is just like care provided by the mother okay so for example if the patient bled and you did not replace it actually it's your responsibility even yes surgeon has to control the bleeding but till the time he is not able to control the bleeding it's your problem okay similarly there may be a lot of reasons like for example blaming will be there will be some reason behind it like for example you are handling a patient in which the patient should not move or they are surgeon is saying that patient is not relaxed for example okay yes if gently you can tell that i have just given a dose of muscle relaxant if you are using a nerve stimulator you can show that patient is fully relaxed then you see this reading patient is fully relaxed and and uh, it's a diplomatic thing but because but you may repeat a little bit of amount of medication okay practically we also do a, a placebo effect because placebo effect sometime work for surgeons as well 
So this is, I'm giving you example. Then blame maybe something X, for example, you, you are doing a eye surgery and patient suddenly moved. It's your responsibility. You have to make sure patient does not move. So like there will be a lot of claims which will have some reason. And you have to find out, is there any part which was there from your side? And unfortunately, majority of time, a number of faults, even if they are not directly related to anesthetist, but they become the fault of anesthetist. In majority of cases. Just give an example in where, what, 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 what point is in your mind with this question? That what blame a surgeon can do to anesthetist? During um, like, my most jobs anesthesia, no? Uh, okay. Patient, critical patient like PIH or CBO PIH. And okay. cardiac arrest, or that uh, develop cardiac arrest, or in the resuscitation team, there are any issues, or delayed resuscitation, something happened. And OBS team normally, as you said, they blame anesthetist. Yes, actually, you know, just like I give you an example that if they are asking, uh, 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 asking to anesthetize a patient and you did not anesthetize, uh, they are saying fetal bradycardia and you, for example, they are asking that we cannot wait and you, they, you are saying, no, no, I can give a spinal in one second. Okay, so actually they, they are absolutely right. If something happens, it's your responsibility. Similarly, yeah, because your, your, your voice is coming very less, I am not sure what did you say exactly, but I'm just trying to guess. For example, if they are talking about uterine, uterus not relax, okay, uh, still you have to manage somehow. Yes, of course, you cannot do a lot of medication as per their will, but you have to do something for that's, for example, if you are giving general anesthesia and, and they are complaining of a uterus relax, you can you can switch off, you can switch off inhalational agent and convert to TIVA. This is what you can do. And actually, practically, I always do. I never use in general anesthesia inhalational agents um, uh, before they, they are fixed with the uterus. This is my technique. Of course, everyone will have their own technique, especially after induction. When they have opened the uterus or they are about to open the uterus before that and after that, till the time hemostasis is not secure, it is better to convert to TIVA because uh, you will you will avoid the factor which which is increasing their problem. So, so again, uh, actually, uh, your point is absolutely valid, but still, you don't have to start fighting in front of the patient or in front of the uh, staff. Yes, there will be, uh, there is a system which is called as uh, a cross variance report or incidents reporting system. So you will report that incidents that that was the, the, the real happening and that they, they, they will be improving the, the situation. There is in good hospital, there is a, uh, there is a system of, uh, if you have any conflict, it is better uh, that you, you can highlight any issue which is valid or invalid. You can highlight that issue and then uh, it will be reviewed by experts. So there is a system in, in all big hospitals about that thing. So similarly, they can ask you about a critical incident, like, like we have in our OSCE exam in Pakistan, when we have OSCE exam, a broken tooth, uh, a PDPH, things like that. They can ask you these things in interview as well, that you give a spinal and now patient is uh, crying, golf patient has uh, PDPH. So how will you manage? So things like that. Okay. Any any other comments, please? Any other points? Any other thing? Anyone? Now watch? in this exam. Yes. Yes, please. Genula. Okay, so you was in other theater. You told your training that you should be there. I'm sorry, your voice. I, I cannot hear you. Please, can you repeat your question? No, no, not I am telling question. Actually, they just now in this uh, YY of FCPS, no, they have asked one because you said about Pakistan. No? So that's yes, why sir. I'm telling you. Uh, are you hearing me? Yes, yes, yes now, now yes, I can. Yes, so they asked that uh, you have one trainee with you. Okay, so uh, he was with you and you went to another OT, operation theater. Okay. So you told them to put cannula. Okay. So you tried cannula. And after that, after I mean to say surgery, you tried two, three, four attempts. And after surgery, patient has swelling in the hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. So patient was asking that what happened with me. 
then they were asking that how you will convince Chen. Yes, that what know, happened with him. Yes, actually, the thing is that this is a very good question, and actually, it's a new, new, newer question uh, which I heard. So I, I again, I will say that uh, uh, your your attitude should, should be apologetic, and you should be telling that because you you can say anything that your veins were very tiny, your veins were not visible, you had severe hypotension, okay, and uh, like you can tell in the the typical words that your blood pressure was low, in not uh, technical words, in simple easy words, in which the patient can be understanding. And then you you can tell that it is, was the reason why this was happened. But uh, we will put some bandage, gray bandage, which will remove the swelling and things like that. Okay. This then, is what yeah, that, that's uh, the, yeah, that was the answer. Then then they were asking that uh, how you will prevent this in the future. I mean to say you can say what, you know practically you can say will you that tell this you uh, all these things to your patient before. You can you can tell if you see that's what that is the aim of uh, preoperative evaluation as well. So in the operation in the the next you can say that I can use ultrasound, I can use vein visualizer. If I, I if I see that I'm having multiple pricks, I can go for a central line in the, if it is dire emergency, things like that. You can say vein when vein visualizer. You can get an expert help. You can use uh, uh, like lower. Uh, uh, thinner cannula, okay. Like you, you can, you can. Yeah, yeah. That, that was they were saying, but they were asking that will you, uh, will you inform your patient before about these all these things? They were asking. Then this uh, is thing that, that if you see a patient at risk, if you see that's why you should be looking at the area of interest. This is called as area of interest. If you know that you will have an arterial line place, you have to inform the patient. If you know that you might need in uh, IV cannulas and you see that IV lines are very difficult, you say that I am starting with this IV cannula and maybe I will need another one. So because sometimes it becomes very difficult. So maybe you will, uh, you you might need to have more than one pricks. You can explain in that way. Okay. And vein visualizer, ultrasound. Uh, <laughs> then is one answer. <laughs> that, uh, that was the answer from... Uh, opposite side was that that if you will tell patient that that will be the swelling on your end then no patient will come to you they no, they told course. me like this but in, actually in informed way. consent informed consent is not uh blanket blanket consent which we usually take we usually take blanket consent not informed consent our consent is just like we are just throwing the things we don't inform we don't tell the patients the correct values. We don't tell the patient the correct scenario. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes, Tayyab. Uh, sir, uh, I want to add something. Uh, they, uh, uh, there was one question. How will you uh, tackle this problem next time? Uh, yeah. <laughs> in this we can do, like, uh, first of all, we, we should have a good tourniquet. Mm -hmm. uh, if... Uh, uh, with one tourniquet, uh, veins are not visible. We can apply two tourniquets. Mm -hmm. We can take help from our assistant to hold the arm uh, firmly. Another uh, uh, measure is uh, we put uh, some uh, uh, soaked warm gauze piece on the vein so that okay. they become uh, dilated. Yes, uh, very good. Uh, and uh, also we must have done some hydration uh, if other uh, IV is uh, going on uh, so perfect. that uh, veins are not collapsed. Perfect. And even you can you can have use gravity. Okay. You can like, for example, you can bring the arm with gravity so that uh, okay. there, will be, there will be some pulling. No, that, 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 that was not like this. They were asking that if your trainee has inserted that IV line. No problem. So they, uh, they I, I, actually, I hope, no, I no, they understand. want to know, actually, I think so, that how you will train your trainee about that one, that in future, that it will not happen. No, no, you, I, I, I understand your question. This is the same answer which we are telling, that we will be trying to have these, these measures to reduce such incidents in future. Okay? Yeah. So, I think... Uh,
um actually uh, uh, because i was on the road i was stuck in traffic so i just still try to have this discussion uh, we we can have uh, like uh, any any topic being discussed like that because a number of people ask about interviews so i will uh, in, in some um, other discussion i will have this, some such discussion on how to make a cv because i when i see the cvs of my colleagues I just feel embarrassed because the, the CV of doctors should not be a CV of a typewriter. Our our doctor's CV is terrible. And and the, the, the worst thing which I see, a reference will be furnished upon request. This is the this is the worst thing which I see in the CVs of almost all my residents. So I, I would I will suggest all of you all the residents to bring bring up your cv from today from the first year of, of residency you should make you should know how to make your cv okay so thank you very much all of you for your presence and uh, any questions are welcomed any question you want to ask okay so thank you very much uh, I, I, actually i couldn't uh, do in the way because I was driving and I, I couldn't uh, have the screen share uh, but I will just try to have another se such session on this uh, journal topic uh, unfortunately people don't ask questions because in first year they are only crying sir we don't know what to read what to study in uh, second year and third year they are lazy and in fourth year they suddenly see the exam in one uh, attempt, they are only thinking that how is the exam, and then second attempt they realize, oh, this is a serious business, and they are they are stuck in the game. The thing is that yeah. please don't don't hesitate to ask question. If you if you have hesitation to ask question, believe me, this is the biggest problem and biggest uh, reason for all the problems. So ask the questions like a baby. A baby does not hesitate to ask even hundreds of questions to his or her parent. Okay. So don't uh, hesitate to ask question. I am uh, yes. You cannot control your nerves. That is the very you cannot reproduce. Even you know the answer, but you cannot reproduce. That was yes. the very so, worst part. So yeah, uh, another, should... yes, please have some talk on FCI. I am always welcome. You can contact me, Mr. Abid, and I will tell you what FCI is. Yeah. There is there are a number of sessions which I have done for uh, uh, career counseling and how to study. And if you see it, you will find a number of answers for, for, for that thing. FCI is also an CG exam, by the way, believe me. And believe me in uh, FCI, uh, also thyroid hormone is being secreted by thyroid gland. Okay, so don't worry. <laughs> don't, don't think that uh, FCI is something out of the world. Okay, yes. You, you, uh, Abid, uh, you know, you know um, the thing, uh, unfortunately, which hurts me, people are not having any impulse to look at the, the, the links, unfortunately. In YouTube, everything is there. I am not, uh, and by the way, I, it's, I'm not doing it for any, uh, like uh, that I will become a billionaire uh, from this uh, YouTube. So, but it hurts me when I see that there is no impulse. There be, don't nobody interested in looking at the links. Now I am reached home. Just a second, let me show you. This is the channel. This is the the channel link. Okay. So this is YouTube channel for uh, uh, anesthesia knowledge. And you go to playlists. It will believe me. Uh, it will have only few minutes to to have a look on it. But unfortunately, you, uh, nobody is interested even even spend few minutes to search okay so you will you will find a folder here how to study okay so a number of trip tricks i have uh, entered here okay you will find it here a number of things are there in uh, career counseling and i will put this in both of them how to study and how I also the career counseling and things like that so just try to help me out. I, it's not matter that I cannot tell you. I, I want to tell all of you anytime. But it hurts me because the people who are, who are attached with me, who listen to me, are not interested to have even few minutes of, of your uh, their time to be spent or to find. Everything is there, believe me. You, you just, just have a look on the list and you will find everything. 
Similarly, this is the link for this uh, articles and tutorials. Everything is there. But unfortunately, nobody looks at it. Unfortunately, there are books. Every book is there uh, arranged. Basic sciences, clinical sciences, ICU books, MCQs books, OSCE books, physics equipment books, SAQs books, everything is there. Because for articles, I have made another separate link. Uh, it's there. I will just show you. This is, uh, I have made it separately. And whenever I share, I share it separately. So this is for articles. Okay. Um, uh, this, this is, uh, this is a link. Okay. So uh, this is a uh, year wise and topic wise. You will find a uh, year wise here in different, you see from 2003 to 2022 for this source and uh, anesthesia tutorial of the week. Um, maybe last three or four I couldn't put. Uh, rest of them are here. Uh, similarly, uh, this is BJ Education. Similarly, since 2001 to 2022, up till I think December, I put it. Okay. Uh, here it is. Okay. So everything is there. Unfortunately, for uh, uh, when I uh, uh, sometime I just request to look at it, people become angry. It's not matter of insert, believe me. It's not, I'm not, uh, like I'm there for help anyone, anytime. But believe me, just look, think about myself. That I'm doing it all for everyone. And if I'm not a one-man show, I don't want to be a one-man show. I want all of you who respect me, who praise me, who want to say thanks to me. My thanks is only this one. That take this message and help others around you. If, if this is the only, if you want to thank me, if you don't, if you are not doing this thing, you are not thanking me. You are not thanking me at all. So whosoever uh, thinks that I'm doing something for you, pass it forward to others. This is the only thing which I want from you. Okay. So, but unfortunately, when people pass the exam, they have an, they, they become in aura and their aura remains for many years. Or, and then they, they become in the vicious cycle. They give the same answer, which our, unfortunately, our supervisors say, please read and we, then we will discuss. And that day never comes. Okay. When the, someone passed the exam, they have a photo shoot with them, cake cutting ceremony. The one who fail, oh, he, he doesn't used to study well. That's why he failed. They don't take any responsibility for failure. They only take responsibility. Oh my God, I have hundred percent result. All my candidates pass. Uh, continuing the tradition. This is the what you what you see in the WhatsApp and in Facebook. Unfortunately, I, I have nothing personal with them. But what are they doing? Unfortunately, they're making a very beautiful presentation and making conducting a course does not replace the real time need of these small tiny things. The personality making, the grooming, the the. the the teaching on the head side of the patient with the resident, there is no replacement for it. This is not the replacement that you conduct a course before exam and your even your candidates pass. Unfortunately, they are not compatible to international standards. Okay. And I have, believe me, again, I say, if you want to, to, to have your country being represented in the best way, try to follow the international standards. Try to do, forget about what is happening in front of you. Always make your own plan. Try to come out of the books. Try to read critically topic-oriented study. Okay, whatever I'm doing it, maybe some people are in other part of the world and why I'm doing it? This is not my responsibility. Okay, this is uh, like uh, uh, the thing is that my, my motto, if you understand, please spread this motto because there is so much selfishness is in our world. And that selfishness starts from ourselves. Because if we do only the things which are related to us, then the problem starts. Because there is no bloody problem for me to, to talk to you. Okay? But I still feel responsibility within myself that Allah bestowed upon me so much. And now this is my responsibility, especially to my countrymen, of course. But in other parts of the world as well, yeah. anywhere, there, there are some people in the in my group who are from Africa and they, they I feel so happy when I tell them something because I have I have seen people coming from Africa in in a in a diploma course I did in, in Dubai 
and that for the first time I came to know there are people in worse scenario than us. We are much, 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 much better scenarios than them. Okay, so please, please try to understand. If anyone, I don't want, you know, I, I don't allow anything, any personal messages in the group. I don't want thumbs up. I don't want these things. If you, if any one of you who is listening wants to thank me, please help people around you. Ask questions, discuss cases, discuss scenarios. Okay. And don't find uh, reasons to do something. Do it uh, for the sake of humanity. Okay. Because unfortunately, we don't do it. Okay. So thank you, all of you. And don't hesitate, ask questions, anything, anytime. Okay. Abid, I hope you don't mind my words. Okay. Any, any other comment? Okay. We used to listen to your lecture. So, uh, okay. So, thank you very much. Bye bye. Salam alaikum.